All right, we're live here. Okay, welcome to Front Office Success, podcast number 15. We took a little break and now we're back. And we are here with Dr. Shaheen Safarian. Uh, Dr. Safarian graduated from Tufts School of Medicine in 2001. And uh, prior to that, he received his MBA, played three years of professional soccer. Uh, that's an incredible part of your story there. <laughs> And uh, in 2003, he invested in his first dental practice and through lots of trial and error has learned how to become a very successful business owner in our profession. He currently has three dental practices in the San Diego area, and he launched the seven-figure dental practice in 2017. And this program is focused on business training for dentists where they can learn how to run a successful dental business, which is something we never really learned in dental school. So welcome to the podcast. Do you mind if I call you Shaheen? Perfect. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for having me today. I'm excited about it. Well, I'm so glad you could be here. I know um, I, I've been watching you on Facebook and I, I see your videos pop up every time. I'm like, who is this guy? He keeps coming up on my timeline. <laughs> right. So I got it. You know, I said, maybe I, maybe I need to listen to you. And I, I listened to your uh, program and man, it was, it was incredible. Your, um, I should say your pure honesty of how you just, just lay out everything that you've been through. And, you know, the struggles that you've been through is very similar to other people. But sometimes when you hear people um, give their talks, they talk so much about their success, but they really don't talk too much about their struggles. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because when I first graduated from dental school, um, you know, I came out with about $350,000 in debt. Yeah. Pretty much I get a degree in my hand and it's kind of like I turn around and look at my school and they're kind of waving at me going, okay, see you later. Good luck in the real world. Right. You know? And now I got this degree, but I also have this heavy loan in my pocket as well. Yeah. And, you know, quite frankly, you just have to kind of, you know, you don't have any mentor or any any coach or anything coming out of school, at least in 2001. So I just kind of had to figure it out by myself and, you know, made a lot of mistakes my first six to seven years. Yeah. Um, and I really found myself by 2008, found myself in a really big hole. Uh, I was about $2 million in debt. My credit scores were in the low 400s. Wow. Something I'm certainly not proud of. Um, but I do believe that that is the essence of why we're talking today and why, right. you know, 10 years later come about this, you know, uh, situation and being able to talk to you about my experiences. So, yeah, I do believe that, uh, you have to go through some tough times, right? Yeah. Um, so it's certainly not an easy road. Tell me a little bit about before dental school. So you, you got your MBA with, what led you from going from your MBA and get business degree? Uh, to going into actually even before that as professional soccer, right? So how long were you playing professional soccer for? Yeah, you know, I started dental school um, at 29. Okay. So I uh, played until I was 27. Wow. And quite frankly, and I know this sounds kind of strange, you know, this is, you know, 25 years ago, I'm going to be 50 this year. Nice. Um, and, and I was a different person back then. And uh, to be honest, I just wanted to play soccer when I was in my late teens, early 20s, and nothing else really mattered. So yeah. um, I had another year to get my MBA degree on a scholarship. So I did that, finished that. And then it just happened that I you know, was talented enough to go play a little bit of soccer. This is pre-MLS. Yeah. I played 92 to 95. Wow. Uh, and then 95, I kind of looked around and realized that I want to do a little bit more with my life and with my career besides just being a pro soccer player for 15 years. If I was fortunate to play that long, if I wasn't going to get injured. Um, and so I decided to, you know, kind of step back and take a look at what my options were. My dad is a medical surgeon, medical doctor. So mm -hmm. I had that background and was brought up in that environment. So I knew it had to be something in the medical side to try to help um, the community and the people. And so dentistry was it. I chose to do that. And uh, that was about, to be honest, I decided to be a dentist at 27. Yeah. Um, and then I took a year or two and just went back to school to get my degree as far as, or get my prerequisites and yeah. take the DAT, all that stuff. And, uh, and I was fortunate to get accepted in, into Tufts in 1997. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, so um, 
Now, there were, you were practicing for um, how many years before you decided to um, create your new company here? Yeah, you know, um, it's interesting. So, um, you know, the last few years and obviously throughout the last 17 years of talking to Dennis, I grew a passion of realizing that um, we really don't get it. Um, I certainly didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I found myself in a pretty large hole. Um, I think what's important for us is, and, and I could really just speak for myself. First of all, my program is not some type of a magic pill or, you know, something that if you, if you go through the program now, all of a sudden you're going to be a millionaire. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Our right. profession doesn't work that way. Right. And the real world, really, you just have to work really, really hard. Right. So what I try to do is I really try to just give direction mm -hmm. and guidance, which I think we as business owners don't have. We certainly know, you know, we sit chair side, get a patient numb, give them a block or infiltrate, and, you know, prep a tooth or whatever it is that we're doing. We have training to do that, right. but we don't really have the training as far as, you know, the vision and the goals and the direction. Many times we just kind of, you know, go through the motions and then realize, like I did in 2008, that I was in a big hole. Right. And in 2003, I bought a practice that I shouldn't have bought. In 2006, I bought a practice that I shouldn't have bought. Mm -hmm. uh, so moral of the story is, is my point here is that I'm really just trying to get into the mindset of the business owner that's running a dental practice to right. try to help them have a better, better business. Right. Well, I mean, and so, you and brought so, some good points. I mean, um, definitely... Um, you know, you, you made a, you made a choice to go into dental school and, um, you know, your family were, you already had a parent in the medical field. So it, it makes sense that you kind of led to that degree, but, um, but would you say that your background in business as well as your MBA, as well as your, you know, your professional training, how did that play a, a role in being a business owner? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, and we all have different mindsets. We all live different. Our value system is different. Our vision is different as far as what we believe, um, where we're going to be happy, right? And so yeah. talking to a lot of dentists, I think the problem is the passion and the happiness. So really for me, it was more based on, um, you know, just pushing myself, mm -hmm. right? Pushing myself to be better the next day and the next week and the next month. Yeah. So okay. one thing really led to another. And in 2011, I decided that I didn't want to be in one office nice. for 35 years and retire yeah. in that office. And that's when I started to expand into multiple offices. In about 2013, I started doing some marketing for doctors and started, you know, really getting into, and it, this is just kind of one thing led to another, right? Um, as far as my growth, to get to this stage and opening up my own program last year. Yeah. And I realized that we just lack so many things um, as I did. So that's how I launched the program a year ago. And the goal really, like I said, is to just help the dentist become a better business owner. That sounds great. Um, so can you give a little bit more examples, um, like a specific example of how you would have helped somebody if, if there was a dentist who, was struggling of one of your one of your favorite stories you'd like to talk about. Mm -hmm.